All right, Brent Portsy with TopVelocity.net. We're going to break down <clears throat> Lewis here. Going to pair him up to a, a submarine pitcher. So coming out of leg lift, you're going to see difference here is this pitcher, this Japanese pitcher here from the World Baseball Classic, he doesn't start to crouch or lean over initially. He starts moving and then starts crouching. So the problem is when you start crouching early, Lewis, is you – put your body in a position to where it's it's harder now to balance because all your weight is now over your toes so therefore it's going to be harder to pick up energy you're trying to accelerate and pick up energy so you want to stay more upright as you start your momentum forward and then as you start going you can start bringing your trunk down so i'd, I'd work on that from here you can see this picture he gets in an internally rotated drive leg position. So this back leg quickly internally rotates. This is a strategy that you can use. And what that's doing is for him, because a submarine pitcher is you lean so far over, it makes it hard for you to rotate your hips because you're literally leaning in front of where your hips want to need to rotate. So you're kind of blocking your hips off, unfortunately. So by turning the back foot down, you're still able to, as he gets up on the big toe, drive, propel, and accelerate, which will push the hip around, even though the hip's going to struggle to get through your trunk position. But it will allow you to accelerate, which is really what your hips do when they rotate. It allows everything to push ahead and accelerate you down the mound. So you can see when you get to that position, you're not as internally rotated. Okay, so you're going to be more on the side of your foot, which is going to be it's going to be hard to push and accelerate to drive your back shoulder around when you're on the side of your foot and your hips can't rotate. Okay, because then you start pushing into this, uh, you know, this knee position. This or what we call valgus knee position, where the knee doesn't really want to move in that direction. That's why we've got to get internally rotated so we can push forward. So that's just the the key difference right here between both of y'all is that. He's more internally rotated, turning up on his big toe as he brings his trunk back. So his trunk's more back than yours, and he's more internally rotated. So that's how we create the shoulder separation from a submarine slot. All right, that's one. That's one way to do it. Um, so that that's the key difference here. Look at this shoulder orientation. Even the hips are here, just like here. You're, both your hips are the same. He's just got a, a, a more internally rotated leg up on the ball of his foot to push. And he's got a more counter-rotated trunk, so that's going to allow him to create hip and shoulder separation. You want to create that as a thrower, as a hitter, as much as you can, because that allows you to accelerate more energy in the upper body. So you can see going into landing, okay, he doesn't get a lot of drive, but he keeps pushing the shin down, which also keeps, keeps helping the pelvis rotate, and it keeps driving force into the front leg. You can go, when you, when you can see, when you go to foot down, you're off the rubber, your hips are still completely closed and there's not as much, more than likely, not as much force driving from behind, driving from the backside um, through that back pelvis. And look, his shoulders are closed. You're starting to open. So that, that initial hip to shoulder separation of really closing off while turning shin down has helped him into landing. Now he has a more closed shoulder orientation than you which means he has more time to accelerate before ball release. You're going to more quickly get to ball release. So you, you drop your elbow and your arm then gets into extension. And I like how you extend your front leg. That helps a lot. That's good. And we also want to look at, at this point, are you dropping your elbow below your shoulder position? And that's why this arm slot can be unhealthy when that elbow lays back under the shoulder position. You don't want to be that. You want to be, if you watch here as he goes forward into release, okay, he's more than likely elbow, shoulder to elbow height. You know, just like if he was over the top, the elbow would be with the shoulder or just above the shoulder. You just got to make sure you're not in that um, lower elbow position. That's going to be hard on your arm. Also, too, when he comes into rotation, look how his trunk keeps going forward. When you come into rotation, okay, you don't get as much forward trunk, 
until you get extended, then you get the forward trunk. So it's a little too late in the movement. So what you want to do, that's, that's the purpose of the, getting the back toe down, getting the shin down and pushing as, even as he goes into rotation, he's still pushing. You can see that ankle extending because that's the linear energy he needs to push his trunk forward. You don't get that linear, inner, linear energy into landing because you don't have much as much of a push until your front leg starts pushing back, but it's too late for you. You know, his front leg doesn't even push back. He's using more of a complete backside approach. So if I was you, I would really want to work on doing what he's done better than you here is getting more of this counter rotation, getting more internal rotation on that big toe and trying to get a bigger drive into landing so we can propel your trunk harder forward. And then if, if, if you can't on top of that, use the front leg as well as you do, that's just gonna be a bonus for you going forward. So these are just some key things that you can do from the submarine slot that'll help you improve your velocity.